Hi Booktube and welcome to uh, a new video which is going to be a tag video but before we start just checking if I've got any chocolate uh, smeared on my face because you know what I've just finished. Yum yum. So much for uh, giving up chocolate. Okay so this is the uh, the mid-year uh, book tag 2018 which I'm not sure if it was originated by Memento Mori but that's uh, who I uh, uh, how I came by this tag so um, uh, shout out to him and I'll be linking to his uh, his version in the description box. So we're in June, halfway through the year. I think I've read 42 books, which considering last year I read a total of 54, um, is, uh, uh, is up quite a lot on that already, obviously. Um, and it's been an exceedingly good, good year uh, for me reading. There have been very few duds and lots of five-star reads. So on with it, the questions. One, the best book you've read so far in 2018. Well, it's a toss-up between two. It's, it's Jarrett Kobeck's I Hate the Internet and Philip Roth's uh, The Great American Novel, both of which are uh, uh, funny, punishingly critical and analytical of, of the societies that, they, um, that they're dealing with. Roth's is a sort of Cold War America... Uh, no, not Cold War... Well, sort of, yeah... Wartime and then Cold War America filtered through baseball uh, as embodying the spirit of America, and it's it's just hilarious. And it's it's uh, I picked it up specifically after he died because I wanted to read something to honour him, and it was the best possible choice that I could have made. Uh, and the other is Jarrett Kobeck's I Hate the Internet, which is kind of um, lacerating of of uh, our behaviour on the internet and. Uh, the fact that uh, all these sort of Twitter storms where, you know, people sort of issue rape threats or death threats and all it does is make money for Twitter. And, uh, you know, the same for all the, you know, Facebook and all the others. Um, and it's, you know, it's brilliant about race and culture and class uh, and also uh, the, the, the sort of change to San Francisco, it's gentrification. Um, it's just a brilliant book and I, I you know six months into the year I cannot see either of those two being toppled from my books of the year and if they are it's, you know whatever book does that's going to have to go some um, okay number two best sequel you've read in 2018 I don't read sequels I don't read series how many more times you know let's just say everything that has to be said in one book and we can all move on writer reader let, let, let's move on you know I don't mind a, a, an author being obsessed with the same thing and writing it over and over again exploring it over and over again in different books but that's not the same as sequels um, anyway question three the new release you haven't read yet but want to well I'm not quite sure of the definition of a new release because I've been waiting for Ali Smith's Winter uh, to come out in paperback um, because there are many unanswered questions I had from Autumn which is the first in her quartet of books um and i'm you know i want to read winter to see if my original thoughts you know whether i think she's you know been successful in what she's trying to do or not because because after reading autumn i was very much sort of uh, unsure of, of which you know even whether i liked it or not um but i knew it was part of a quartet and i, I felt well i had to place it in the context of, of the others to be able to sort of judge whether i thought it was successful uh and i think that's due to drop around october uh, question four, the most anticipated release from the second half of the year. Well, I'm really sort of not clued up in, in the publishing world of, of what's due out and, and what isn't. I never have been and, and I, you know, it just seems to confound me. I, I just never seem to sort of plug into the right newsletters or news feed streams of, of what's coming out. So I don't know, but all I can do is hope and pray that Ben Marcus has a book out this year. I, you know, uh, and if not him, uh, Michel Huelbeck, but... Uh, you know it's time for a Ben Marcus book um five biggest disappointment I have two for this I have uh Alejandro uh Zambra's My Documents which is a collection of short stories on the usually reliable Fitzcarraldo editions which just did absolutely nothing for me there was one decent story in the collection but the rest and that's really disappointing because the first book of his I read was called um Multiple Choice and was a novel written in the form of a series of multiple choice uh, questions. And it was an ingenious way of unfurling sort of recent Chilean history of Pinochet in the aftermath. And it was brilliant. And I just felt these short stories gave me nothing, really. And then the other one is David Peace, Patient X. Um, David Peace is one of my favourite writers. And half uh, he's he has two different outputs. One is um, sort of Japanese 
uh, style novels and novels set in Japan because he spends half the year living there. And the other half of it is a really intense sort of stream of consciousness inside the mind of, a, of the character. And this was, you know, Patient X was very much on the Japanese um, uh, wing of what he does, but it, it just felt so personal and subjective to him and, and his sort of personal muses and, and mentors, writers who've come before him, that I just, I just felt sort of excluded and sort of kept slightly on the outside of it. So I couldn't really, I didn't feel I was invited into that book at all. Um, question six, biggest surprise. Well, that's uh, Danny Denton's The Early King and the Kid in Yellow, which if you look at the, the cover, which is a sort of a cartoon, you just think this is, you know, this is going to verge on YA or something, which is not my taste, but I, I, far from it. It was a supreme, supreme sort of post-apocalyptic novel in which the sort of desolation and ruin and rusting of sort of... of the, the infrastructure of the country of Ireland, which is basically sort of you know, semi-flooded. Um, but it's also the language that into the vacuum of, of you know, all the jobs have disappeared. It comes sort of gangsters called the early boys and their king. Um, but the language is just stupendous. It's a book that, that, that you just get sort of swept along in the language. And it's almost, I mean, there is a plot and everything, but just the language and the descriptions and the imagery are enough. And it's, you know, so I'll definitely be keeping an eye on Danny Denton because uh, I think that's his, his debut novel. Um, seven, favourite new author. Well, you know, Danny Denton I've just mentioned, but there are two that I want to keep an eye on. Um, the first is Yaroslav, Yaroslav Kulfa, who wrote The Spaceman of Bohemia, which is a great read, really enjoyable read. I would say that most of these I've got dedicated reviews on, so I'll I'll link in the description box to all of those. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what he produces next. And the same goes for Rosie Schneider, who um, whose debut set of uh, short stories were published by uh, Dostoevsky Wannabe, who seemed to be quite a radical, small UK publisher. And the first three stories in that were, were great. I mean, I really, really enjoyed them. I did feel that the, the, the collection tailed off rather after that, but I thought those first three stories were so good. I, again, I'd be really interested to see you know, where, where she goes uh, with her next work. Uh, question eight, newest fictional crush. Well, for me, that's uh, Dana Rasgupta, who wrote uh, a novel called Solo, which I read recently. And despite it sort of basically being lots of things I'm not normally that interested in, which is sort of character-led, story of a life told in flashback, um, he won me over just through his storytelling prowess and I'm very interested to read everything by him. So I've got uh, his, uh, I think his debut novel called Tokyo Council and I've got that to read. Uh, it's not often that I read someone for the first time and then straight away go out and buy one or more of their books but that was the case with Dana Rasgupta so I'd, say, I'd have to say he was my current uh, literary crush. Number nine, newest favourite character. Well, I don't, you know, I don't really, characters aren't really what, make me read uh, for example in I Hate the Internet there's two central characters who I believe get taken on into uh, Kobeck's next book which was set in New York about the club scene but you know I can't remember anything about them but you know because I was much more interested in the things he was saying about you know how we behave online and, and all that other stuff I talked about so I, you know, I don't really have a new favourite character. And even if I did, so what? Because I don't read sequels and series, so they wouldn't appear again anyway. Um, question 10. Book that made you cry, brackets, the saddest book you've read. Well, books don't make me cry. But one that made me very sad, even though the book itself wasn't necessarily sad, is Kafka's America. Because having read that, I now have no new Kafka left to read. I've read everything by him. Um, which does make me sad because, I mean, he is my sort of favourite author, certainly my favourite pre-Second World War author. So I, I was sort of kind of, you know, bummed that that's it. Nothing left to read. Uh, last year I read all his collected short stories. Um, OK, question 11. Book that made you happy? Well, it certainly wasn't Nicola Barker's book called Happy. Uh, that sort of made me enraged, um, as Nicola Barker is wont to do. I'm a bit of a masochist. I've read three of her novels and not enjoyed any of them, but I keep giving her the benefit of the doubt because she does try things. Um, you know, I, I salute her for that. Um, so the book that made me happy was Roth's uh, The Great American Novel because it was just so funny. Um, you know, 
I finished that book and instead of, you know, sometimes you can be sad at the end of a good book, but that was just left me with a smile on my face because it kind of got, you know, fixed in position because I'd laughed so much during the reading of it. Question 12. Favourite book to film adaptation you saw, that you saw this year? No, nope, not having it. As you know, or you should know by now, I'm not into film adaptations of books and I'll post the link to the video. Why? Question 13. Favourite review you've written this year? Well, there's a couple I'm really quite sort of pleased with uh, booktube videos but I have to say the overall one is my one on Will Self where I talked for 45 minutes discussing the, the cons and pros of Will Self everything about because he, he's a writer who very much sort of seeks to be a cultural figure so it's not just about his books so I have to delve into that in order to to then talk about his books and um, I think that's had something like 2,000 views, whereas my next most popular videos had something like, you know, I don't know, 150, 200. <coughs> so I'd have to say that one's done the job. But I'm slightly surprised because Will Self is a writer who gets a lot of clog for quite, you know, appreciable reasons, really, uh, which makes me think that he doesn't have that many sort of supporters and followers and readers. Um, but, you know, 2,000 views can't be bad. Um, maybe they're all people who, who sort of want to put the boot into itself. I don't know. Anyway, um, so there's that one. But the, the, the one I had the most fun making was Steve Donahue's 25 more ran no, 28 more random questions following after the 25 random questions and the 50 questions you've never been asked tags. Because uh, I just went to town with it. I mean, I just uh, I took diabolical liberties with half of the questions. Um, OK, uh, question 14. The most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received? Well, again, uh, you know, I'm not into how a book looks. I'm only interested in the, in the words between the covers. But, you know, if I'm going to attempt to answer this question, I'm going to go, you know, Pond or, in fact, any other Fitzcarraldo book because this is what you get. You get the plain blue cover with the white calligraphy. doesn't matter who the writer is or anything. And that's my kind of aesthetic, you know, because it's about the words. Um, so there's that. I will say, however, that um, The Public Burning by Robert Coo, which I haven't read yet, that's quite a cool cover. The old uh, Richard Nixon caricatured on the front. And uh, last question, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Well, all the big ones that I've put off, <laughs> not even starting. Which means we have John Barth's coming soon. Um, down here in the storage section. Which means it's slightly more like to be read earlier than the John Barth. Yes, the Infinite Jest. Um, we've got The Recognitions by William Gaddis. You know, 10,000 pages. Something like that. 1000. Uh, and this is non fiction Maps of Meaning, The Architecture of Belief by Jordan B. Peters Peterson. Peterson. Yes, that guy who's stirring up lots of shit on, um, on social media by being uh, beloved of the alt right and all of that. But actually, uh, this predates all of his infamy and is about sort of um, why we, the human race, need to tell stories or feel we need to tell stories and where all that comes from. So, that, you know. That's quite interesting. And then finally, the only one I definitely have to read within the year is this, A Constellation of Phenomena by Anthony Mara. And the reason I say I have to read that this year is because I'm a, doing a buddy read with Curtis Books. I think he's just changed his... No, Curtis Books and Books, because he's just changed his channel name. So uh, we're going to read that as soon as it arrives to him from uh, Japan, because he won it in Sean the Book Maniac's uh, celebration of his thousand subscribers giveaway and so it's going to take two months for it to arrive so i will be reading this late summer early early autumn and i'm looking forward to that so uh, those are the books of course if ben marcus does drop a new book that will have to be read within oh i don't know five nanoseconds of it arriving uh, on my doorstep so there you go uh that's my uh mid 2018 uh year book tag um Anyone and everyone should do it. It's a good way of sort of just going back and reviewing, you know, what you've read in the six months and sort of, you know, help shape the start of your Books of the Year uh, review video that you'll do in six months' time. So there you have it. Thanks very much. Till next time.